Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's The Choice. It's just a great getaway. Uh, I love coming to Iowa. Not every buck behind every tree is a Boone and Crockett buck. The experience of seeing the deer in a different habitat from what I'm used to in the southeast is great. Gonna be late, Ralph. Welcome to this week's The Choice. Yeah, baby. We are still in Iowa. Yeah? Yeah. Well, technically I love we're going back to Iowa to do some more hunting because technically we're in Illinois, right? No? Technically, you can... <laughs> we are going, we are, we're still hunting in Iowa. Ooh. Ooh. We still have shotgun season. You, Chris and I, Dr. Chris yes. and I, I mean, it's, it's out there. We love Iowa and we've got more to show, so we should just get going this week. Yes, because technically... Technically. Yeah. He has nothing. Sometimes it's better to keep our mouths shut. Especially when you're sitting next to your wife. Because... <laughs> happy wife. Happy life. <laughs> Technically speaking. <laughs> he pushes that envelope every time. Previously on The Choice, Ralph and Vicki both bagged Iowa monsters with their Browning A5s. This week, Dr. Chris will venture onto the Cian Cirillo farm in hopes of harvesting a big buck himself. I was uh, fortunate and blessed to draw a late season muzzleloader tag in southwest Iowa where uh, Ralph and Vicki have a beautiful farm and they graciously allowed me to come and hunt here again. Uh, we had a great time last year and I was anxious to come back. The season is uh, a limited time, and so we were able to set it right at the first of the year, and we're here. Uh, the weather has been great, and had some snow on the ground, which allows for good deer visualization. It's dead on left right, and it's about three inches high. At, this is not but a, this isn't even 100 yards, 75 yards. So I think that'll be good for, um, in case we have to shoot out to 250. That'll be good. And I was aiming, this was my first one, this is my second one. That's pretty good. Uh, one, two, you know, we're right at three high, which is fine with me. Yep. I'd hate to be the deer. Well, we, we first got here and the, the, the farm has basically been unhunted, uh, very, very low pressure on this farm. And first thing we did is we, right when we got here, before we even unpacked, we went and, and scouted. And we went to see late afternoon where deer were moving uh, where they were headed, uh, what the feeding sources were available, and we uh, were able to determine that they were using, to an extent, the bottom field on Ralph and Vicky's farm. It's January 2nd, late season muscle are open here in South Central Iowa on the Ciancerella Ranch. Um, hunting over a field that's got some standing corn, which is pretty much gone. We got some turnips out there. Lots of sun, lots of tracks. So hopefully we're gonna get some traffic moving through here this afternoon. Pretty afternoon, I'm looking, looking forward to it. Pretty exciting stuff. Last year when we came, the, uh, the bottom field which we hunted had standing beans, which is just a deer magnet in late season. And there was other uh, agricultural fields on their farm. Well, uh, over the summer, uh, they entered a conservation reserve program, which uh, they planted native season, native warm season grasses and uh, took a lot of the ag out, which really changed the deer patterns and really changed the way we needed to hunt because the deer uh, weren't using the same agricultural fields like they were last year. 
We had pegged them down pretty good last year. In addition, there was so much rain this summer that the crop down in the bottom field was poor. Uh, really did not take, the beans did not come up, didn't take, and so uh, it was a little bit different. It wasn't the deer magnet that it usually is, and so we had to kind of figure out once again where they were bedded, where they wanted to go, and uh, we use that to our advantage. The deer actually worked their way out of the field. They were, they were using it different. Last year they were using the field as a target. And this year they were using it to stage as they then were gonna head up into what I think is a cut cornfield to our north. The other interesting thing about this evening was we heard just a symphony of coyotes, uh, more coyotes than I've ever heard anywhere, uh, coming from all directions. And uh, we also thought that may have a, a role in the deer movement. So we, uh, we eased back out with a plan to, to uh, check the winds and see how we would hunt the field the next day. Well, we're about to take the tree jack down into the bottom. Uh, we've, we've got a field, but there's no good trees to put stands on, so we're gonna build a blind using this and some native vegetation. We'll plug it all in and get snuggled in there this afternoon. Tree jack lets you, lets you do that with uh, little cedar trees and other branches you might wanna use for cover. So we'll get that going this afternoon. First night we went out hunting and we get to the access gate where we walk into the property and it's locked of course. Well we're here at uh, the San Cerula gate and he's given us the code because so no one can get in here we keep it locked but he's given us the code and it doesn't work. So we're going to have to break in. Uh, we thought about shooting the lock off but we're going to just go ahead and climb under which really doesn't this lock gate, isn't that supposed to guard against that? So anyway, we're gonna, I know we're gonna give Ralph for Christmas next year, we're gonna give a, a real lock, one that works. I think if we could maybe uh, get a sponsor, uh, Padlock, one of the Padlock companies, uh, Master Lock would be a good one for you, Ralph. And I would also use something where you don't have to spell uh, in, in, with a code, I would use a key. This is a high security gate that Ralph has. Oh, what an old man with a hip replacement can get underneath it. Wards off trespassers like us. improvise and get on the ground downwind of the deer so we can uh, have the advantage from a wind standpoint. Uh, it should work out well though because this, this uh, gives us a lot of mobility. Honey hole. 
hole, so to speak. Got our tree jacks still set up in there, and it's warmed up a little bit. There's a front coming through, so we're getting in a little bit earlier this afternoon in hopes that the deer will move a little bit better. Um, a little bit warmer, ground soft, so you won't, won't make as much noise. Wind is perfect. I'm ready to let my muzzle loader see a little action. It's a muzzle loading rifle. And Ralph, Josh has been trespassing on your property. There was a lot of deer moving up in the timber very early, and actually we watched deer come down to the field edge in the timber and bed as if they were staging before they staged. I think he's a slick five by five. We caught a glimpse of a nice buck back up in the timber behind the does that were milling around, and we watched him and, and finally lost him. The does were acting a little bit spooky, but they, uh, they had bedded down, and lo and behold, the first deer in the field was a really nice 10-point. Dan and I looked at each other and said, I think this is a shooter. He moved out into the field and began to nibble just on the turnips, and we actually decided to, to watch him for a little while and see if anything else would come out. It's rare for a, what I call a shooter buck, to come out first. And so we didn't know if there was going to be something bigger behind him or how long he would stay in the field. And he, he came out and uh, we didn't feel like he was going anywhere and he was on the far side of the field. And if he did, he would only get closer. However, one of the does uh, either caught a glimpse of us or smelled us or something with a swirling wind and the deer went on high alert. If he spooked and all the does spooked, that he would run back up in the bedding area and that would kill it for the afternoon. And with the bad weather coming in the next day, uh, we felt like a buck in the hand was worth two in the bush. Dr. Chris is in the stand for an afternoon hunt and has already seen several does. A beautiful 10-point shooter is now in range, but with the does on high alert, Dr. Chris doesn't have long to take a shot. When I recovered from the recoil, he was running towards us and I thought, oh my gosh, I've missed him. 
he, he ran about 50 yards and then started to do the, the hind end quiver. Boom. For a minute I thought I missed him. They spooked and, they, and he was looking. I said, hey, we better, we better go ahead and take the shot. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Dan. Let it go, buddy. Oh. When he ran this way, I was like, did I hit him? He's a nice buck. He's pretty. Yeah, good bass. Nice picket fence. I like him. You know, a bird in the hand's worth two in the bush. You don't know what's there, but that's the weather's gonna be bad tomorrow. That's good. I'm gonna uh, just tantalize Ralph and Vicky a little bit. I'm gonna give them a little information, but not too much. Let's see. Ralph and Vicky are at the ATA, and they're gracious enough to let us hunt here without them. Let's go get this buck. That's what they're coming for. Not bad. Nice buck. Huh? It's good. We got bladed brow tie in there. Pretty heavy. He's a pretty buck. He's so symmetrical. Look at that, Dan. Pretty. Beams are longer than you think. Good mass out here in the beam. Look at that, he just made a big loop. Yeah, he's blowing blood out the offside. That's where you're staying right here. Looks like a blood blowing back here. He just took off on a death curl. Look back, you can't even see our blind. Yeah, it's funny how the depth plays tricks on you here. See how the depth? I mean, it looks like it's right there, but they were, you know, it goes way back up in there. All in all, it was a fantastic week. Um, it's just a great getaway. Uh, I love coming to Iowa. Uh, not every buck behind every tree is a, is a Boone and Crockett buck. The, uh, the experience of seeing the deer in a different habitat from what I'm used to in the southeast is great. I really enjoy spending time with Dan, the cameraman. I appreciate Ralph and Vicki so much letting me come to their farm and treat it as my own uh, and, let, and share the resources they have with me and I appreciate their friendship greatly. Technically speaking, that's a wrap in Iowa. <laughs> we had a great hunt oh in Iowa. Oh my goodness, I mean, we did. Every time we go to Iowa, we have a great time. We have our own little cabin out there, and we just, I mean, it's just so much fun out there, and it's just wildlife like crazy. Oh, yeah. You know, we want to thank Josh Schneider mm -hmm. for helping out. I mean, all, all of our family and our friends, and just, man, Dr. Chris, again. Good job, buddy. Yeah. But we want to thank you for making your choice. The choice. And um, we'll see you next week. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I, I need some help here. I'm trying to convince Vic to, to, to move to Iowa, to the farm. And we have I, family here, so we won't be moving anytime soon. I really think health, con <laughs> health <laughs> conditions <laughs> would be better you have a hairball? in Iowa. You get a hairball from your beard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, just, <laughs> I think it, the air is cleaner in Iowa. <laughs> That then oh, here, so nasty. I really think we should move to Iowa. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, thanks for making your choice the choice.